This is what your home or office equipment might look like. And this is what it could look like with only a $50 network rack and a $30 patch panel. Welcome back to the channel. My name is Bogdan Shperny, founder of Apex One IT. We do small business IT, but today's a little bit different. Let me show you. This is my networking equipment here and it's looking a bit messy. We test a lot of things. But the point is, you might have something like this if your house or office is already pre-wired with ethernet, right? There's these cables here and we have internet coming in to, to internet modems here. So maybe you have equipment like this that are really rack mountable equipment. That's what they're designed for. And the reason why you might have this is because business devices come in this kind of rack form. This is a unified console on top, which is essentially your network router. Okay, so the internet's coming in here. It's called a console because it can do other things like th these are hard drive bays, so it can serve as your NVR network video recorder as well. Then this is a network switch and yours might not be as large. This is quite a big one actually. But the point is, it doesn't really matter. All of these devices are made to be installed into a network rack. Now this is a very simple one, but typically they're a lot more expensive and a lot more complex. Especially if you go with something like a network cabinet that's enclosed, those can cost more. And there's the time of actually assembling it. So if, even if cost is not a factor. And sometimes you might not even have room to install a network rack. Okay, so that's why today I'm gonna to show you a very simple DIY where we're going to install a vertical rack like this. Very inexpensive, very simple to install, literally required two screws for me. And as a bonus, it's very compact. Okay, so that's like eight inches right there off the wall. Okay, and when I consider this, it's, I don't know, it's like three inches or something that it actually protrudes out. So this leaves the rest of the closet to be a lot more usable. So that's what I'm hoping for. Let me first show you how I plan this out. So this is the rack I chose and it has a 121 pound capacity. And that's because my equipment comes in at 47 pounds, which is quite a bit. You'll see that a lot of other ones like this in a 4U wall vertical mount, if you just look on Amazon, their capacity is usually like 45 pounds and that's just not enough. This battery backup UPS, this is the first thing I have, the closest thing to the drywall here, to the wall. And it's 18 pounds, but this is only a 500 V8. I mean, you'll see a common one that I probably should have used here actually is like a 1500. And that would have been a lot more heavier even. Now my network switch is very heavy. It's very large. Uh, so that's not typical. If I had a smaller switch, I probably would have switched my router and the switch around. But because it's so heavy, that's why it's next to the wall. Then the patch panel and then my router. And this is the UDM Pro Max. It's 10.4 pounds without any hard drives in there. And I also put it here just to cover up, you know, any of the cables hanging off the patch panel. I should mention, by the way, so your ONT or like internet modem, you can also just wall mount it next to this somewhere. It usually comes with some kind of mounting bracket or, or you just put in some screws. It can mount very easily. But anyways, with this patch panel, I have at one pound, but really it's heavier because you're going to have keystones in there. You're going to have the cable actually running off of that. And I will install a couple more accessories that I'm going to show you. I mean, it's in grams. It doesn't matter too much, but let's go ahead with the install and that will help you decide, you know, which of these or what you actually want to install. Okay. Let's check out what we have here. First, it's our instructions. We'll take a look at that in a second. First, looks like we have all the cage nuts and screws that will go in here and hold our rack equipment. So that's nice. Then I think this is what we want now. It's pretty cool that this comes basically assembled. We're just going to secure it with four more screws. And then we have these quite large wood screws. Okay, there it is assembled in about a minute. Now back in the closet, I think I want this somewhere. So you see that it fits in here pretty good. And these are 16 inches on center. So if you're you know, putting it on a standard wall, you have standard construction, it should align perfectly. Yeah, I think somewhere here. Cause I want to be able to see the top of the rack units. So let's measure and find the studs. Okay, so I got something there and I like to use these pieces of uh, blue tape. 
this kind of nicely marks out. Okay, so I have my stud locations. Okay, I think I'm gonna go about there. As you can see, the studs don't really align. That's okay, I'll show you what we're going to use instead. A little bit of gap on each side. Make sure we're level. Right, so I have my four holes, although I think honestly I'm probably just going to use two and you use some like pull toggle bolts. Uh, that should hold this pretty well. Since I'm going through drywall and I have, you know, no studs behind it, this is a great little guy to use. So you can use it on brick like it shows here as well, block. And this is exactly how that will work. So this piece will go through, it's all kind of one piece. It screws in and you see it says holds up to 155 pounds. Now, I maybe wouldn't hold something that heavy there, but I have mounted TVs and all that good stuff with this heavy TV, so this is pretty good. And these are, this is just what I have lying around. But honestly, I would have used, so they have this quarter inch one, they also have a 3 16 probably smaller, probably 3 16 is more than enough. But for this size, we do need a half inch drill bit, you see that, just to get to pass this through. Okay, then grab this guy, fold it over, pull it back. You should feel it kind of get stuck. It's vertical in there now. Okay, so I push that in, that grommet, and then it should just break right off. I'm gonna leave a little gap here for now so that the rack can slide on. Okay, that shouldn't go anywhere. And ideally, I would install two more down here, but I'm also not loading it to the max or anywhere close. So I'll let you know, it shouldn't fall down, it should be okay. If you recall, this was the rest of the hardware from the rack. Those are the mounting screws that we're not using. These are the cage nuts, so for mounting the actual devices. And I'm used to like 1032s or 832, American Rice Standard. These are M5 actually. For the Unify equipment, which will be the three rack spaces, yeah, see, M5 it says. Those come with their own cage nuts. So this I only need for the battery backup UPS. So we do need four, so we'll install these. This here is the battery backup UPS that I'm using here. The rack mounted ones will come with rack ears for you to install. Okay, and then this is the hardware from the rack itself. So these were the M5 screws. And what's nice about this is that heavy equipment like this is very easy to install in a vertical rack because you don't have to hold it, it just sits there. And that's actually the whole rack moving because I only installed two screws. And then we have super easy access to the outlets themselves. Here's the Unify patch panel. Now I know I said, you know, it's optional, but really whenever I install racks, it's not optional <laughs> because you don't want to put extra wear on the hard lines, the ethernet cables are there. It's better to use the patch cables. You don't always know exactly where cables will plug into, or if you have more cables, much easier to use a patch panel. And especially one like this, where you also don't need to punch down any cables. First, let's install these rack ears. And these small screws go in here. And this strain relief, I probably wouldn't install it with this unified patch panel because it's gonna be vertically mounted. And this guy, you know what? It probably won't fall out because it won't be able to go past this angle. Yeah, so actually I will, I will install it. It just, it's a little bit funky because it's really made for a horizontal rack like this. Okay, so we grab the cage nuts and these are 1032. Okay, and this is going in position two. Now I could go ahead and install this in a network rack, but it's easier if you first install your keystone jacks or couplers like this. So these are the Cas6 from Unify. You don't have to use theirs. I'll, I'll link for you 
these ones or other ones, they also have CAT6A. It's all the same stuff, it's just so you know which kind of cable you're going with. So this is CAT6. You see, these are couplers because you don't have to terminate anything on the backside. They're just going to pop in and you can use a pre-terminated ethernet cable or you know, if you have them already terminated. I'm gonna remove this. And they pop in like so. So there's a little bottom little tab right there and this will click in. So place the bottom in just like that. Yeah, it's best if you already know kind of where your cables will be. I mean, you could do this whole entire one and just put these keystone couplers everywhere. But I'm gonna show you a couple other accessories as well. Because if, if you are just putting all of these everywhere but you're not actually connecting all of them with patch cables, you'll want to cover these up. Especially because they're vertical, so you're gonna get a lot of dust in there. Okay, so if you really want to use See, these are the CAT 6A, the ones that are labeled like that, and they're this reflective kind of aluminum finish on it. Because I actually realized I ran out of these, so let me, I might as well show you what these look like. So it goes in the same way. You'll see they just look a little different. What I did here is, you see these ones are the Unify ones. CAT 6, these are just other generic ones. Let's say CAT 6 on them from like Amazon, I'll have a link for you, but you can decide whatever kind of one looks better for you. I would say I like the look of the white ones, but these silver ones, the cat 6 a couplers from Unify, they fit a lot more snug. Okay, so what you do with these two ends? On one of them, it's pretty simple. These are Keystone Blank inserts. Comes in a 24 pack. And this is literally just for aesthetic reasons like so. So those work there very nicely, but here, I'm actually going to use these new blank insert pass-throughs. And the reason why is because I want to have the ethernet cable come in from the modem, right? So we have to plug that into our network router, and these will allow me to pass that cable through there, just like that. It's a bit finicky, but if you want to look clean, that's what you gotta do. See, it pops out like that. And it pops in like any other keystone. So just the bottom and then the top. And I'm putting two because I do have two internet providers just for backup. That's what it looks on the backside. So you'll see, right, these super easy to connect a ethernet cable, no problem. Okay, so now I can disconnect these, all these cables and pass them through the bottom. Okay, so the only other thing is I just need to push some of these cables back into the wall, into that crawl space up there. Okay, this is where I would typically use these pass-through inserts. But honestly, now I realize I don't need them. This I would typically use if I'm using the DAC cables. Let me show you what those look like, the SFP Plus cables. So I'm not using these, that, that would be useful for the pass-throughs. I could pass through an RJ45, for example, through here. So if I wanted to do that, this is how you would do that. Okay, and then that's going to go to my gateway or network router. But again, it's not really made for RJ45, it's more like for DAX and other unique cables. Because here, again, for my second internet provider, I can just use the coupler again. Okay, so this is coming off my second ISP or internet service provider. I'm just going to plug that in. Okay, so the Unify switch is going in here. All the Unify equipment, it will have all the necessary mounting equipment, like these cage nuts. And then for the Unify console router, same thing here basically. Okay, so first, this is my primary internet here, right? And that's going to go into our Unify router. So that should pick up the internet here. Then let's use these Unify ether lighting patch cables. Sorry, and I skipped this one because this was, remember, for my backup internet, which will be right here. Now I'm using these Unify 
ether lighting patch cables because I have an ether lighting switch. If you can see all those lights going off. And it's not just for show, it does look very cool. But you can also assign the colors to be useful things like speed or like view ends. Okay, that looks pretty cool. However, we have one big problem. These RG45 ports here are just wide open. And we don't want to leave that open for dust. These SFP Plus ports, they come with these plastic black ones that are already blocked off, so that's good. But we still need some dust covers. Okay, so I'm going to use these right here from Unify because they match that silver aluminum color very well. Okay, that's these RJ45 dust covers. Okay, one thing I forgot is actually to connect these router to the switch, and we're going to use this SFP Plus port for no bottlenecks. And for that, I'm going to use this uplink cable. It's actually even, yeah, it can be up to SFP28. And there it is, a 4U compact vertical mounts rack with Unify equipment because it looks good. And not just on the outside, I mean, they make their software look very good as well. And that's why we deploy Unify always. And if you're first time setting up Unify network, especially for a small business office, I have a video for you right here where I walk you through step by step on how to set it up, kind of best practice as well. Otherwise, if you found this video helpful, please like the video, subscribe for more tutorials, installations like this. Thanks for watching. See you next one.